These are quick jacks and I've owned them for about five months now. So let me tell you what I think about them and if they're worth buying. For a guy who owns 35 cars and spends a lot of time working on them. Now Aubrey got me these quick jacks back in May earlier this year and got it in an open box sale where she only paid $700 or maybe $800, she doesn't really know. It's somewhere in that exact range, but it's way cheaper than they actually are. Now, give or take, these are about $1,200, depending on which size you get. This is the medium size. They do have a smaller, shorter one, and one for longer vehicles, the long boys. Now, if you don't know what quick jacks are, they're advertised as a portable, movable, or temporary quick jack solution, where you no longer have to jack up one individual side of a vehicle. You just place them on one side, place that on the other, hit a button, and it raises it on up. And they do a really good job. And these are really ideal for people who have a smaller garage or simply don't want to have a two post lift in their garage and simply need to lift it up a little bit higher than maybe a jack would. Now, whenever Aubrey was doing her research to see what would work best with us, she was deciding between the quick jack system or the max jack system. Now, ultimately, we decided to not go the max jack system because you have to drill into your floors and that's something we didn't want to do. We also felt that wasn't very versatile, so quick jacks is what we went with. Now, whenever we got the quick jack system, there is a bit of assembly. It's kind of like adult Legos. You do have to assemble a lot of these fittings, which are very important because they are under a lot of pressure. So reading the instructions was a must have. Now, all in all, it took me about 30 minutes to get this set up. And then I was able to start lifting vehicles and working on them. But let's get to the actual review. So let's talk about setup and teardown between uses. Now, setup is pretty simple. You get your quick jacks into position. You take both of the lines, pop these caps off and the line coming from the pump and the line coming from the quick jack and you simply push them together. Once you get them together, you twist them and then you go ahead and align it up with the pinch welds of your vehicle. Once you have the connections set up, they're underneath the car, you simply just grab the controller and hit the up button. And you're not supposed to raise them up all the way without a car on there because they do require a little bit of pressure to put them down. I'm a hefty 290, so this works out well. But all in all, it takes about 15 seconds for them to rise from the floor all the way up. But when raised all the way to the top, they raise the vehicle about two and a half feet. I think it's about two, two and a half, maybe three feet. It's enough for me to get my fat six foot nine and three quarters belly underneath the vehicle, not only on my back and the floor, but even using my creeper, which is kind of hard to do because it raises me up another three inches. But I'll have Aubrey fact check this when she edits this video. Now set up from start to finish takes about four minutes and it's pretty easy. Now set up is this easy because I leave them on the floor of my garage and Aubrey drives her Tesla over this every time she goes to park in the garage. Now it's important to remember these things are very heavy. I'm a pretty strong pup, but these things are no joke. They weigh about probably say at least a hundred pounds a piece. These are technically designed to store and hang them up against a wall. Now, if you use them as designed, you do have to set them up by first taking them off of the wall, positioning them and hooking up the lines. And then when you're done, unhooking the lines and raising it back up against the wall. That's a lot of work. So the fact that Aubrey drives over these when she parks in the garage makes this setup a lot easier. If I had no other choice but to set these up every single time from getting them off the wall, I probably wouldn't use them as much. To me, the ability to drive your vehicle over them when parking in the garage is a must. Now first, what I don't like about these, they're heavy and they're clunky. Now maybe this is due to the design of them being very sturdy and being able to lift up 5,000 pounds between the pair, but this is no joke. When you're reaching underneath the vehicle, and you have to maybe get it from underneath the vehicle like this. You have to be pretty strong. Now they did include these little grabbers which are supposed to be able to go underneath the vehicle, grab them like this, and pull, but then they slide around like this. There's no real area to grab them. Yeah. These are really thoughtful, but not so practical. Now I'm not necessarily complaining about the clunkiness, especially if it's the design, but it certainly does make it a little harder to use. Now another thing are these blocks. Now these are meant to be positioned underneath the vehicle to get in certain areas or the lifting points of the vehicles. Now Quick Jacks advertise this as a near universal product where they fit most vehicles. And this is relatively true, especially with the medium size. But we found out certain vehicles these do not fit on. Aubrey's Tesla really pushes the limits because these are so tall and Aubrey's Tesla is relatively lower. When they get these blocks underneath to put them on the pads, you have to barely fit them underneath the jacking points. And there's not a lot of room for error. Now they do come with two different size blocks. These smaller ones, 
They also have these bigger blocks, which certainly do help with bigger vehicles like our Ford Escape, which is a average size SUV. And they do have extenders, but we don't have these. But these blocks do a pretty good job considering they fit almost all of our personal and Turo vehicles. Another small gripe is this is the pump unit. This is the electric motor, and this is the storage tank for all the hydraulic fluid that it pushes through these lines. Now my small gripe is this doesn't have a stand. You simply just have to pick this up and place it wherever it needs to go. And in this case, it's on the floor. There's no little pegs or nothing. They kind of tend to slide around a little bit. And truthfully, I just have to push it up against the wall near the electrical socket. And whenever I'm done using the lines, I simply just wrap them over the unit themselves. There's no stand or wheelie rolls or nothing to really harness all these cords. It feels like a lot and it's just a lot of extra clutter. Now, why is this better than this? Well, for starters, if you really want to make your neighbors mad, just drag this down your street. Super loud. And these essentially act like a jack stand. Let me show you. Whenever this pinch point rises upwards, this arm drags upon these two locking areas. So it'll lock at a lower level and then it locks at the peak level when this little bar jams into here. Are these inherently safer? I'd say so, because sometimes whenever you're trying to fix an issue on a vehicle, you don't want to go grab a jack stand or maybe you didn't jack it up high enough. This either is all the way up or halfway up and it does a great job, really easy to lock into place. With a conventional jack, not only do you have to risk smacking this against your door or having enough room side to side to swing this arm back and forth, and that causes a lot of issue when you're working in tighter spaces like a garage with a expensive GT500. Not only that, but you have four corners to jack up now. You have to jack up the left side, the left front, the left rear, the right front, the right rear, and you have to do it in a specific order to make sure your car doesn't slide around or move around. Then you not only have to do that, but you have to put jack stands under all four corners. That takes a lot of time, and simply jacking up a lower vehicle or even a higher vehicle can take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. It's a lot of time wasted. With the quick jacks, four minutes, slide it into place, line it up, hit a button, and you're up. And in some cases, depending on how low your vehicle is, you can't just jack it up in one go. You have to jack up the left side, then you have to jack stand it, jack it up on the right side, jack stand it, then you have to go back to the left side to race it up even further. Now me personally, I would have never bought this system if Aubrey hadn't bought them for me. And this is mainly due to the fact that this works all the time. I was raised on jack and jack stands since I was a young kid. Safety was a really big thing and jack and jack stands is always the way to go. But I am so glad that I have these because these are so worth the money and I really like using them. I use these realistically 95% of the time whenever a vehicle comes in here to get work done. Now I think this is worth it because I have a fleet of cars that I work on almost every day. If you're a Turo host or a car enthusiast that works on their cars often or really likes to be involved with working on their cars, I highly recommend getting these systems. I would even recommend this at full price, but who doesn't love a sale? But is this worth it for the casual oil changer that's only changing the oil maybe once every six months to a year? Is the time that you're gonna be saving while using these systems worth the money? If the answer is yes, certainly buy them. If the answer is no, I'd probably say stick to a jack and jack stands. But there you guys have it, my official review on using the quick jack system. Overall, I've been super happy with them and I would buy them again if I went back in time. As always guys, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe and hit that notification bell. We'll see you in the next episode.